In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Kirsty Louise Alley is an actress, producer, TV personality, and more who first achieved recognition in the 80s, starring in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, then as Rebecca Howe on the NBC sitcom Cheers, which aired from 1987 to 1993. For this role, Kirsty also received an Emmy and a Golden Globe Award. Throughout the 90s, Kirsty would go on to appear in more TV series and film roles, such as Look Who's Talking and It's two sequels, It Takes Two alongside the Olsen twins, one of my personal faves, and much more. In 2005, Kirsty played a fictionalized version of herself on Showtime's Fat Actress and appeared on a few reality TV series too. All in all, she's definitely kept herself active in Hollywood over the years. The iconic actress and comedian has earned a hefty fortune thanks to her last few decades in TV and movie showbiz, holding a current estimated net worth of about $40 million. She's even used some of that cash to buy some pet lemurs, but I'll get to that shortly. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer and today we're bringing you another house tour here on Famous Entertainment. I noticed 95% of you watching aren't subscribing, so be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post a new video daily. In this one, we'll take a look at the currently Twitter trending and longtime actress Kirstie Alley and two properties she's called home over the years, one in LA and one in Maine. If you like these videos, ring that bell for notifications. We've also done house tours in the likes of Danny DeVito and Courtney Cox and we'll link to some at the end. Now let's get into this video. Just last year, it was reported that Kiersey had put one of her homes on the market, a grand mansion in the Los Feliz hood of Los Angeles. But it doesn't appear she sold it yet. Although she's wanting to say cheers to the home, finding a buyer hasn't come easily. She even had to chop $1.2 million off the price tag. However, Kiersey bought the mega home back in 2000 for around $2.9 million. So even lowering the asking price from $11.9 million to $10.7, she still stands to turn a hefty profit for the place. Kiersey's mansion was built back in 1932 and described as a palazzo because of its intricate Italian influenced design, which makes it a standout among the other old Hollywood residences in the area. Situated on the historic Aberdeen Avenue, the actress's home offers almost an acre of lawns and foliage, backing right onto the famous Griffith Park. A unique bonus of her home, she has a lemur habitat on the property. At the end of a long gated driveway, you'll arrive at Kirstie's lavishly detailed estate, which spans 8,622 square feet feet inside with six beds, five full baths, and two half baths. The villa retained many of the historic touches from years prior, including hand-carved woodwork, painted murals, gilded moldings, and decorated fireplaces. Just viewing the photos of Kirstie's home and the place looks like a palace. At first, Kirstie's home boasts a circular entrance gallery lined with blue toned murals, which leads you to the public spaces. There's what looks like a great room or salon, with wood paneled walls, beamed ceilings, and an opulent chandelier, while some of the other common rooms offer gorgeous fireplaces. Her kitchen has been updated with an island, modern appliances, tile walls, and high vaulted ceiling, and it's gotta be one of the nicest kitchens I've seen. There's even a beautiful chandelier over the center island. The butler's pantry and sun-drenched breakfast nook have been left intact, as well as the outdoor kitchen, which you can access via French doors. The most dramatic features may just be in two of Kirstie's bathrooms, where one features scenes of underwater sea life, complete with jellyfish tentacles dangling overhead. The other is based on a tropical garden and shows flowers blooming everywhere. The bedrooms in the Palazzo Mansion have classic features as well, many with chandeliers, archways, and large attached terraces. The most spacious of which is, of course, Kirstie's master suite that's also beautifully decorated. Outside the mansion, the elegant old world grounds include fountains, grottos, ponds, and perfect landscaping. Not to mention, like any good celebrity mansion, Kirstie has a pool with a fountain shaded by trees, which she's no doubt gotten to enjoy over the years living here. I do wish we had photos of her pet lemurs, though. I wonder if she's built a new home for them when she moves. While the steep asking price for Kirstie's home is well steep, it's not the highest priced property listed in that zip code right now. There are a few in the ballpark of 20 million, which are also pretty grandiose mansions to say the least. Another place that Kirstie has long called home is Islesboro, Maine. Earlier this year, it was reported she sold her most recent property here, which we'll take a look at. But prior to closing the sale, the actress had been a part of this island community for 30 years. Kirstie was at the height of her fame 
fame when she came to the island in the 1990s, but residents say she fit right in and was super down to earth. She and her ex-husband first moved to Islesboro together and opened an inn, but when they divorced in 1997, her ex got that place. Kirstie's most recent home on Islesboro is a frilly ladylike cottage designed differently than anything you've likely seen before. Public property records show that her retreat on the dramatic coast of Maine was built in 1993, and she acquired it in 2003 for about $1.15 million. Kirstie's home was on Pendleton Point, offering a private 16 acres with gorgeous waterfront. If you've never heard of Islesboro, you're not alone. It's a very quiet community accessible only by ferry or private plane. While it's not your traditional celebrity hotspot, John Travolta used to be a part-time resident here too. Inside, the 12-room cottage offers 3,400 square feet with 5 beds and 4.5 baths, and listing materials describe it as having the beauty of the new and charm of yesteryear. The architecture is full of cozy nooks, fireplaces, and natural lights. High ceilings, custom woodwork, and more make the place a perfect retreat. Somehow, the super girly and frilly interior design is kind of cool, at least in my opinion. It's definitely an acquired taste, but with lots of pink, even a pink kitchen, but I like it. There are beamed white and pink ceilings, walls that follow the same color scheme, and some with floral wallpaper. The common spaces include the country kitchen with Viking brand and retro style appliances, and a few different living and dining rooms with floral furniture, fireplaces, and beautiful chandeliers in almost every room. Kirstie's cottage looks like something off of Pinterest. Plank wood floors run through the main living areas, and in the formal dining room, there's a built-in buffet. There's a gigantic pantry with vintage wash sink, portable work island, and rows of open shelving. Each of the bedrooms and bathrooms have the same girly and powdery vibe and resemble a high-end bed and breakfast. Beautiful and lushly maintained gardens surround the house as well as multiple porches and decks, including a covered one with outdoor fireplace. A dining deck off the main living room offers a view of the coastline, and Kirstie's home sits right on the shore. A sprawling deck and pier round out this waterfront estate. Kirstie apparently sold her home with an asking price of $2.3 million, but assures the community she's not done with Owsboro just yet. She posted on the Facebook group, I love Owsboro and will miss you all. My family and I have some of the most memorable times of our lives here. We hope to return for more summers in the future. To any of you here who have touched our lives, thank you. So there we have it for the homes of actress and comedian Kirstie Alley. What did you guys think of our two eclectic properties? I for one thought they each had a unique and unforgettable design. I loved both the LA mansion and even the frilly pink main cottage. If you guys had to rate her two estates, what would you give them? Let me know in the comments or tell me which was your fave. I also recently started a personal channel and I post a new video every Sunday. I'm gonna be filming a Q&A soon over there, so please start asking me any questions you want to know. Drop one in the comments over on Instagram, wherever, and I'll answer. We'll link you my latest video. So, as you can see, I can't do it in front of the camera. Oh my gosh. Wow. Failure. I'm gonna do that right now. Y'all can stare at the back of my head. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and let me know which celeb houses you want to see next. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.